IMDb lists this series, To The Lake, as coming out in October 2020, everywhere except for its home country, Russia, where it came out an entire year earlier. And my question is, was that exactly the same cut? Because there are some scenes which seem a little bit too, shall we say, 2020-esque. To The Lake isn't even called that in the original Russian. It's just called Epidemic. But here's where the plot thickens. Because the scenes from which you would reasonably decide to title it To The Lake are those same scenes, the ones that seem a little bit too aware of the current situation. What? Last minute changes to an entire plot premise as a cash grab? <laughs> Netflix. A Russian friend of mine warned me that this series might be a little bit too depressing because, you know, too close to the bone and all that, but no, not really. It's not depressing for that reason, it's just depressing because it's dark and depressing. The characters make for much more intense viewing than the virus itself, which is basically a less extreme version of a zombie situation. So while you don't get things trying to eat each other's faces, you do get people with wide eyes coughing up blood, the military just taking folks out, and old ladies crossing roads irresponsibly. It's an intense situation. The story in this show is very tense, without there being any real kind of arc. The characters are trying to get to the lake, but there's not really a mounting tension as they get closer. Each episode basically just presents a series of challenges. Which is not to say that that doesn't work, it is a gripping series. But without knowing that there are eight episodes, it would be impossible to tell how far through the series you were. The characters are a bit of a mixed bag. Something that this series definitely can't be accused of is giving the characters too much of what they want too easily. Men, women, children, it doesn't matter. No one catches a break here very easily and no one gives each other a break. Which is good, I like my characters troubled, but sometimes it feels a little bit forced. You know, like sometimes people do actually catch a break rather than an infectious disease. If you like what Hollywood is doing with the constant virtue signaling and condemnation of the very behavior that they spent 90 years encouraging, then you won't like this Russian series. That's not to say that it's highly politically incorrect, that's just to say that Russia seems to be stuck all the way back in 2010 when the purpose of a series was not to teach me how to think correctly. Spasiba. The story here moves so quickly from there might be some kind of outbreak in Moscow to full-on apocalyptic levels of behavior that you could definitely accuse it of sort of sweeping some of the details under the rug. Like, what kind of disease is this? Exactly what regions are closed? Are masks compulsory? What's the normal human temperature again? Is 41 right? But personally, I say this as a compliment. We've all seen Contagion and 28 Days Later and Outbreak and Monsters Inc. and The World. We don't need an explanation of what it looks like for a country to go into full-on insanity. This script understands that it's about its characters, which is good because there are a lot of characters, maybe even a few too many. There's even a scene where a little boy tries to explain it to an outsider and she doesn't get it at all. Now this may be somewhat self-aware of how confusing this is, but it doesn't excuse the fact that this remains confusing into the final episode. Would speaking Russian help? Probably. Would watching it with English subtitles rather than Swedish subtitles help? Probably also. Was I just flexing about watching it with Swedish subtitles? Yes. Moving on to the harsher side of my review, and there isn't a lot of competence in the directing here. You can tell that they've seen a lot of films and series. They know the general idea of how you direct stuff, but they don't really seem to have decided on what they want in terms of look and feel. All the shots are perfectly decent shots, but there's not really any reason that they were shot that way and not another way. For example, there's a ton of GoPro shots. Now, sometimes there's a GoPro present in which it makes sense. Other times, why are we watching this? This is probably even clearer in the music. Some of it is really good, but some of it makes it obvious that they've seen American Beauty and gone, ah, the music accompanies a fantasy, I get it, and they've just done that a lot. But unlike American Beauty, it's the same fantasy every time. It doesn't move into anything else, and it doesn't serve as a marker for the character. It's just, there's the girl again, play the song. It's not even a good song. Another thing, and this is just a problem I have with virus stories in general, is that they always have extremely short incubation periods and very obvious symptoms. In other words, it quickly becomes clear if someone's infected. 
This is just a wasted opportunity in my view. Imagine the tension you could build if you had a longer incubation period, but one of the reported early symptoms was something subtle like being overly thirsty. For water. I mean for water. Thirsty for water. But no, that'd be too subtle. Instead we've got white eyes, coughing up blood, complete delirium. I don't know about you, but I think something funny's going on. Speaking of missed opportunities, this is one of those stories where a kind of ragtag team of people are thrown together by fate and circumstance. And I said before that they have deep flaws, relationship problems, and just non-resolvable clashes with each other, which all feel very real, but it still seems to me that if you've got an excuse to basically have any assortment of characters you like, which in this case you do, you could do a little bit better than this. None of them feel that different. Sure, they don't agree on everything, but they're all from roughly the same worldview. And there's also one plot reveal, I guess you would call it, that's not entirely clear what it actually means. It's one of those ones where you kind of go, ooh. Wait, what difference does that make? As always, there's a lot more that I could say about this series, but there wouldn't be much point to a review that ran for the same length of the series. So overall, I suggest The Lake. Suggest being my 7 out of 10. It was pretty good. Make sure that if you have anything to say, agreements, disagreements, random comments, whatever, make sure to use the comment section because that's what the comment section is for. Remember to subscribe because where else are you going to find someone who reviews a Russian series in English after watching it with Swedish subtitle? I don't think you're going to find that anywhere else. Make sure you're subscribed. The video's over.